Today, we're gonna to show you the brand new select subject in Photoshop, which uses cloud processing and the results are incredible. Hey there, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Ace, and today we're gonna to show you this brand new huge update in Photoshop. We've had select subject out for a while, which is basically the click of the button and it finds the subject in your image and selects them. But now we can choose where we want that processing to happen on the device, like on your computer, or we can have it process in the cloud. You have to be connected to the internet for this to happen, but the results are amazing. So today I chose four different images that are actually like really challenging for Photoshop to do this. We're gonna be putting it to the desk and I think you're gonna be amazed by the results. So we'll start off by showing you how to turn cloud processing on and then the best tool for the job so you can change this at any point in time. So we're starting off in Photoshop 2025. You don't need to download the beta. This is in the full build of Photoshop. Go ahead to Photoshop and then we're gonna to go to our settings and we're gonna to go to image processing. And here we're gonna see select subject and remove background. Here you can choose whether you want it to be in the device or the cloud. We're gonna go ahead and choose cloud. Now we're gonna hit okay. By default, you're gonna get a few ways to select your subject. One of the ways that I usually use it is here in the contextual taskbar, we're gonna see select subject. But in this case, I don't actually have the option of whether I wanna do this in the device or on the cloud. But my favorite way to do this is actually with the brand new object selection tool. So with the object selection tool, I have select subject right up here, but then I have a drop down, and I can choose per image every time I wanna use this, whether I wanna do device or cloud settings. So let's start off with device. There we go, let's go ahead and check that. This is how it's always been. This is our traditional select subject. So let's go ahead and press on select subject, and it's going to find our subject. Now, as you can see, it did a pretty good job, but here, especially like, you know, this is the background behind our subject and all these fan blades. This is the sort of thing where we would have to go in and kind of fix this manually. So what we're gonna do, let's go ahead and deselect because I wanna show you before and afters with all this. So we're gonna just duplicate this background, Control or Command J. So this first background layer, we're gonna use select subject and we're gonna do this right here on the device. Okay, this is the traditional setting. We're gonna to go to select subject here, and then I'm gonna load this as a layer mask. So we have our background setting. You can click on your layer mask icon right over here, or you can simply click on your layer mask icon here. They both do the same thing. Okay, so we can see this is the result of our first select subject with the device settings. It left a lot of information here that's not actually the subject. All right, let's go ahead and turn on our second layer. And again, I'm choosing difficult images. So now we're gonna go back to our object selection tool, okay? Here's select subject, we're gonna go ahead and choose cloud processing. It takes a little longer, you gotta be connected to the internet, but the results are stunning. Let's go ahead and click on select subject and see what it does. And the accuracy is incredible. Look at all of this for our selection. Honestly, it's just, it's kind of flawless in between the hair, all of it. Let's go ahead and create a layer mask on there to cut this out from our background. And it's literally, Perfect, look at this, I'm zooming in and we can see all of these different settings. So let's just show you this first option. This is the traditional select subject where you would have to go in and clean all this information up. And now with cloud processing, boom, we have incredible results. But it doesn't end there. We're gonna add a second example. Now I'm choosing difficult examples where like this subject has curly hair and it's right in front of a dark background. Like this is a difficult thing to cut out. It always has been in Photoshop. So let's see how it does. Again, we're gonna duplicate the background. We're gonna start off with going to our object selection tool. This is my favorite way to do it. You can choose device to start with and then click on select subject. And then you know what? We're gonna click on our layer mask. And yeah, it did okay, but it included a lot of the leaf behind our subject. We even have a border right around here for our subject. Down here in the dress, that's a hard edge, it's totally okay, but this, you know, it didn't do the best job. So let's go ahead and load in our second layer. We're gonna go to our object selection tool, right up here, boom, cloud processing, yes please. Hit select subject, and there we go. Let's go ahead and pop a layer mask so we see how it's actually done, and this layer mask. Okay, not 100% perfect right around the hair, but if I compare these two, it's a lot better. So this was the select subject, with just the device processing and included a lot of the background. And here we go, this is the cloud processing. 
way, way, way better. And we could go in and manually clean that up after the fact. You can see we still have a little bit of this, you know, around the edge. Now, if you do need to go and clean the edges up a little bit, here's what I recommend doing. Simply double click right here on your layer mask. There we go. Now, if it's the first time you click on your layer mask, it's gonna say, do you wanna adjust the properties or go into selected mask? I always recommend go to selected mask. Okay, then we wanna use this refine edge brush tool right over here. And then you can simply paint in like this, just like this. You can see I'm going over our subject's hair. And when I let go, you can see it really does a nice job cleaning up that selection. So if you do have any areas that require a little bit more cleanup, that's okay. Just double click on the mask, kind of paint over that with this selection brush tool and we're looking much, much better. All right, I think that looks really, really good and we are on the way. So let's hit okay and you can see the layer mask looks good. Now I'm gonna give you one more tip because I think, hey, why not? It's worth doing here. You can see this green color. That's not the color of her hair. So here's a cool tip. We're gonna create a new layer here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and clip this layer is layer two, so it only shows up where layer one is. So let's hold Alt or Option. I'm gonna go between them and clip them. That layer is gonna push over to the right-hand side and point down to this layer. Let's hit B for the brush tool. I'm gonna to change this layer blend mode from normal. We're gonna go down to hue, which is at the bottom of the list. I'll show you how to do it. Just double click there, go right all the way down to hue. We wanna make sure it's set to hue. We're gonna use our brush tool, hold Alt or Option and grab the color of the actual hair and then paint it over here. So literally, what I'm doing here is on a new layer, I'm painting with the hue of our subject's hair, okay? And that's just gonna help us get rid of all that green. See, if I turn this layer off and on, there was that green in the background, I turn it back on, and we have a little bit better of a selection. Now again, there are other ways in which you can go in and clean this selection up even more. Keep in mind, I like literally chose the most difficult examples I could think of, and it's doing a really, really good job. If you did wanna clean up this selection a little bit more, what you could actually do is just take a selection from this part of the hair and then put it here on the top. That's another way that I like to make these selections active, okay? It's a little bit more complex, but you could do it. Overall, today we're testing the new select subject. I think it's working really, really well. Okay, let's move into our third example. And in this example, we have our subject with light hair, you know, almost white colored hair on a white colored background. I can barely even see the difference between my subject's hair in the background myself, which means, I mean, you know, I'm choosing difficult images on purpose. Okay, let's go ahead and duplicate our background. The first layer here, what we're gonna do is go to our object selection tool, boom. Select subject, we're gonna choose device and then go ahead and select out our subject and then put a layer mask on it, okay? Now what we can see is this actually included some of the background here. So we can see that's actually not our subject, that's the background. And here as well, you can see it included a lot of the background. Let's go ahead and add this other layer here. We're gonna go to our new select a subject with the object selection tool. We're gonna choose it right over here to do it on the cloud and then go ahead and select that subject. Fantastic, and here you can see it did a much better job. Let's create a layer mask on there. And there we go, it did a really good job. Now, here's a cool test here. You can actually just create a solid color fill layer. Okay, we're just gonna do like a light pink or something like that. There we go, right behind our subject. And here we can see now, pretty good. My subject is really well selected. So here is the regular on device processing. You can see the background there. You can see all this around the hair. But here we go with the cloud processing, much better. Now here again, what I would do personally, still double click right here on that layer mask, go to your refine edge, and then go ahead and just paint right here at the edge of the hair. There we go, you can see, and as I paint, it's gonna clean the edges up, and it's gonna give you an even better selection of the hair. So if you need to refine at any point, this is the way you wanna do it. There we go, and it's looking fantastic. Just hit okay on the very bottom right, and our subject is really nicely cut out from the background, okay? There are some things you could do. For instance, I might make this hair just a little bit brighter so it stands off a little bit more. So what you could do is grab, you could go to layers, down to new adjustment layer and over to levels, okay? I'm gonna use this previous layer to create a clipping mask, basically just so it shows up only on that layer. And then we're just gonna take this and make it a little bit brighter. There we go. 
and then I'm gonna go to my layer mask, hit Controller Command I. We're gonna invert that layer mask and then paint white just on the very edge. That's just gonna make that hair a little bit lighter and it's not gonna seem as dark. It's just gonna stand out a little bit nicer and it'll look a little bit more like the subject's hair. But that's a pretty nice selection for just a couple of seconds. All right, we got one more great example for you. Let's go to window down to our fourth example. Here's our subject holding a stick with some flowers on it. I mean, can you imagine trying to select this manually? This would be so much work. This is a really, really difficult selection. All right, so let's go ahead and duplicate that background layer on our first layer. We're gonna go again to our object selection tool. Let's go to select subject on the device, which is the older traditional setting and cut her out, okay? You can see here, all right, let's just take a look. Okay, it didn't include her ponytails, right? Like this is not, I mean, not ponytail, but her hair. It didn't include that at all. The edges are super rough. And then it came to the holding this branch with sticks. It, well, really didn't do a great job and it didn't even include her arm. So let's go ahead and see what this tool does with our new cloud processing object selection tool. We're gonna go right over here. We pop down to cloud, hit select subject. There we go. Oh my gosh, do you see that? Like it actually selected every single one of those branches. Let's go ahead and click on our layer mask and see this did an amazing job. It included her hair on the sides. We can still go in and refine that layer mask if we need to, but uh, we got a little bit of stuff right there we might need to do a little cleanup of. But overall, this is a huge improvement on the tool. Honestly, it works really well. And the fact that you just have that little drop down. But by the way, if you go into your preferences, okay, so Photoshop and you just go into your settings and you go into image processing here, if you just choose here cloud, okay, then it's gonna just do this by default, right? So like if you had a duplicate of this layer, let's just delete that, uh, there we go. If you had just like a regular layer, if you choose cloud settings in your default properties, then when you click on this select subject, it's just gonna use the new cloud-based, okay? And you can see, yes, it in fact did use the new cloud-based. So you don't have to go into this tool and then choose which version you want to every single time. I did that mostly so I can show you the different versions of these different ones. But as long as you go into your preferences and choose that cloud-based processing, you're gonna be using the newest, latest version, and it's gonna be on the cloud Got to be connected to the internet. It sends the image to the internet, does a bunch of AI processing, sends it back and makes an amazing selection. Now here's a little bit of a bonus. So let's go back to that earlier example where the hair was super difficult. I'm going to show you how to overcome this. Alrighty. So what we're going to do is remember we have this subject here. Okay. We use select subject to cut our hair out. And then we put this other layer on here, which kind of color corrected that side of her head. Okay but this top area really doesn't look that good. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna just duplicate those two layers and hit Control Command E to merge those two layers together. Okay, so I still have my backup here as a group, but now I have a merged copy. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna use our brand new, I love this tool, the Selection Brush Tool. We're gonna go ahead and make selection around the hair that looks really good. And then I'm gonna hit Control Command J to duplicate that. And you can just see we have a new hair now, okay? Let's hit controller command T. We're gonna just hit, uh, bring this right over there and then flip it horizontally. And then now I can kind of just place this hair about where we think it's going to look good. That looks pretty good. And then on the original layer, we're just gonna grab our layer mask and then paint black on the layer mask. There we go. So now what we have, I mean, it's, it basically is just the same hair from there to there, but you can take it one more step. You can hit controller command T, right click here, and you go down to warp, and then you can really just kind of warp it around. There we go. And then it's not gonna look exactly like the same hair. And then you still have a really nice selection of hair on the top and on the sides. And if you do this a few times, like I can hit Control or Command J, I can right click and say flip horizontal. Let's just go right over here, flip horizontal again. There we go. And now I can just really kind of bring this in here and you can even use a layer blend mode, something like normal, just change it to darken, and there you go. You get a really nice new selection of hair. Everything looks beautifully well cut out. Just put a layer mask where you don't want it to show up, and it's a good way to get around that. It's not exactly the same selection, 
that it would have been had you perfectly cut out her hair, but you still wind up with a really nice result all the way around your subject simply by duplicating part of her hair, moving it around the place, and then a layer masking it in. It's a great way to get the job done. Thanks so much for watching. All in all, I think this is an amazing upgrade to Photoshop. This is one of those AI things that it's not trying to generate a new image. It's not an artistic or creative AI, right? This is just something to help us with our traditional workflow and making those tedious jobs easier. And I'd love to know what you think of it because there's two AIs. There's the AI that's just like, kind of takes away some of the boring work for you. And then there's the AI that does the creative stuff, which I'm not a huge fan of. And I know a lot of people are not. So let me know what you guys think about this sort of tools in Photoshop. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, give us a big thumbs up. And if you want to learn more advanced photography, Photoshop and Lightroom, check out Flurn Pro. We have an exclusive discount for you. All you have to do is click on the link right down below or on the screen and we'll send it right to you. Thanks again. And I'll learn you later. Bye everyone.